What's going on everyone? This is Token Gaijin with your scrub play of the day here on Scrubcraft. We're going to have a 2v2 match with me and Deathwith as always as the Brotoss spawning up here against 2 Terran, Malcor, and Drewid, I think is what his name is. Anyway, I know I've been saying I've been trying to get other races on here, but it turns out I don't know if I can do it. I'm really bad with Zerg and I really don't want to post any of the Zerg videos. I I play because I'm just, I'm, I mean, even when I do win, it's just so bad and heinous. It's just, it's so scrubby. And even in this game, I do a little bit of scrub. But that's because in this game, we're going to be fighting off a cheese. We're going to have two Terran who are both going to try to cheese us. And we're both going to, you're going to see examples of how to block some early Terran cheeses with Protoss. Because sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to do with Protoss. Now, I go and I check the, ba the back of the base. The reason I do that is you never know. This map, Molten, or this isn't Molten Craver. This is, I can't remember the name of this, Space Dock or something. Anyway, on this map particularly, even though I can't remember the name, I apologize for that. Uh, in this map, especially on 2v2, a lot of times you'll have an early probe or an SCV at the beginning go right back here into the back of the base and then drop some bullshit. So it's always good to check back there because I've seen anything from like Rax Rush to cannon rushes from back here because like I mean look at all that you can't see in the back of your base and it's relatively not that big of a distance so anyway this Terran Drewid you see him kind of like putting that uh, racks or he was putting a bunker down because he was going to get ready to bunker rush but we had our stuff up front and I'm assuming what happened because I mean this is you, you could tell that he like was like oh crap it looks like he wasn't paying attention because he was paying a lot of attention to his macro I bet you what he did was he sent it over and just was like gonna build the bunker here regardless he wasn't expecting us to have stuff at the front but we like to build things not at the front to wall off but more towards the front because like I said on this map you don't want to let things you know just rush in here so he's just going to town building engineering bays in here just trying you know to make us overcommit to it or to oh you know Oh, too concentrate too much on stopping this, but you know, it's just like, alright, whatever. I sent my three probes back. It, three probes is not really that big of a commitment. I still have my gateways down, but he did delay us a little bit. So Death Wraith has decided that he's going to go for troops, and I'm going to get out of Forge in another gateway and try to get us some cannons for defense, because we know either an early attack is coming or a cheese, and we think it's going to be an early timing attack. We're not really sure what it is because we don't see any racks in their base. You can see Death Wraith is poking around, and when you don't see any production in their base, you know something is coming, and that is exactly what we got right here. We got two racks coming down with Tech Labs, which means only one thing. We got Reapers on the way, or Marauders, most likely Reaper Cheese, because you don't see his Terran or Red Friend doing anything but build supply depots, trying to close this off. Trying to get a little bit of, I guess, what he's calling base defense. I really don't know why he's building that many supply depots. Because after that, he could have seen that we really didn't have much to begin with. But we are going to be pushing out. I am getting cannons at the front. Because we, at this point, we thought it was just going to be proxy racks rush. We weren't sure if it was going to be reapers or racks rush. But since we didn't see any buildings by red at all either, we were assuming it was going to be racks proxy. So we were building stuff at the front. But you're going to see him get these Reapers into my base. Not to worry, though, we recover fairly well. Uh, because Reapers, even though they are really nice harassment, especially in the early game, uh, Stalkers just eat them up and so do Cannons. And he's only got two racks, so he's not going to be able to produce a shitload of them uh, quick enough to really just stop us in one go. So I got the two Cannons up here. I got my two Gateways, and I'm just pumping out probes because I want to get a couple more Cannons down. Um... My, and I also started getting some gas. I really didn't know what I was going to be building into, but since I didn't really know what we were doing yet, I just decided, you know, I'll get a couple more cannons out, and here it comes. The Reapers! Now, you see, he takes out two or three of my probes. I'm not really sure how many. There's another one going down. But I got my probes out of there. I really didn't overcommit to trying to kill them. I mean, there are just three Reapers. I might have been able to take them, but... Reapers have an amazing ability to just destroy probes and buildings. They get a special bonuses against them. Especially light, so he's gonna start trying to poke around in my base I'm trying to get my probes back to my line because I want to mine and he's gonna start hitting this cannon But this stalker is just gonna come up and I'm just like oh god cannon gun But that stalker is gonna be too much for th two reapers to handle after one goes down So he's trying to reinforce right here, but you know, we're still really not that concerned I am gonna get my probes back on the line I'm gonna get another cannon out here so I get a little bit more coverage of my line when he tries to hit this wall and we're already pretty fairly aware that he's probably going to hit Death Wraith's wall. So Death Wraith has moved his stalkers back here in anticipation, which is the right call. And he's getting some more stalkers out to deal with it. 
Now, as you can see, he is getting an expansion and everything down here. I wouldn't have recommended that. This Reaper push is doing a fair bit of delaying, and he really wants to get a lot more bang for his buck because he's spending a lot of money on these Reapers. But he just isn't able to commit. He got he pushed Deathwraith out to try and hit his line, but Deathwraith got his line out way too fast. I mean, this is a short amount of area to defend, so there's really not much he can do at this point. Reapers are great on level, like on areas where there's a lot of like travel and dark space in your base, but there really isn't much room for him to get into the back of our base through our defenses. So he's really just kind of at a loss. This Reaper rush wasn't well ex, I, it was well executed because he didn't overcommit, but it wasn't well planned. This isn't one of those maps that are really the best idea for Reapers. It would have been better for proxy racks, because if all four players were proxy racksing us, it would have been far better. But now that Deathwraith has these Stalkers here, Stalkers are just going to easily clean up these Reapers. There's not much he's going to be able to do, because they just can't deal with these armored forces. And while Deathwraith is trying to get this out, I decided I'm going to poke out with my probe and see what else is going on, because I wasn't aware of what Red was doing, or if he had a proxy or anything. So I, I sent my probe out to go check their expansions, because at this point, we knew for a while that he didn't have any buildings in his base that could build any units. So we were assuming that he had either fast expanded, or built something proxied as well. So I was going to go check their naturals to go see if they actually had quick fast expanded, but it, as it turns out, he really did just build all these freaking supply depots. I don't even know why he's just building supply depots. He's trying to get this wall, but it's... This is such a huge waste of economy. There's no need for it. And I mean, these this is a gold league team. I mean, I don't really understand this thinking at all. So, I mean, maybe... I mean, if you're a Terran player and you understand it, let me know. But, I mean, from my personal stance, I don't get why you would commit to this many supply depots not have anything to back your... Your friend, I mean, because look at him, I mean, he's losing his two racks, the only racks, you really, I mean, you have this racks, so you're not building anything from it. You got this factory, but you're not building anything from it. But he's got starboards going down, so that means he is planning to go Banshees, so they're just going from one cheese to another. And at this point, like, since we had been hit so many times in cheese, and I actually had no idea what he was building, because he had this big wall, I couldn't get through it even if I wanted to. I didn't really know if they had any proxy bases or anything anywhere else, so I decide to build my expansion here, and I, the reason I built it here is because we just cockboxed blue from his hit. Red was already a little, uh, a little, we already knew Red was going to be behind because he tried this bunker slash engineering bay rush. I have no idea what the hell that even was. So I decide, you know what, why not just build my natural right, or by, build my expansion right in their natural. I mean, it's not like they're moving out there. I know blue isn't going to be able to get out there anytime soon because we denied him. And I'm going to get out Stargates, because he's building, he's already committed heavily to Reapers, and uh, it looks like he's doing tech lab units. So I'm like, you know what, I'm going to get some Voids out and poke around and try to destroy bases and get around their defenses. But actually, Voids don't actually serve that purpose. They actually serve as the main attack unit, because what do they go for? Marauders. And since Red is getting out these uh, Banshees, instead of trying to get anything else out, those Voids are just going to clean them up, because no forces on their team have the ability to attack air. So Deathwraith is just going to keep poking out. He's going to just keep butt scooting, trying to kill these marauders off as quickly as possible, and now we've got them locked in their base. And we weren't actually sure we had them locked in their base, so we're going to actually send some probes out in a little bit, but I mean, just, I mean, Deathwraith just does a tremendous job butt scooting and, like, I guess this is a great diversion for him, but there's not enough troops to just fend against Deathwraith's forces, so they're just going to be stuck here while they're trying to do anything else. Now these Banshees are going to start getting coming out, but I do have this base coming down, and I'm a little bit behind because I've been concentrating on super saturating this, so I can get a lot of cannons to defend, but now that I don't need cannons anymore, and I know Death Rays going to the ground, I'm just fully committing to Void Rays, so even though I'm somewhat behind because I had to react to the push and delayed mining because of their Reapers, I am coming back in, and I know it's a little slow, it's, a lot, it's really frustrating when this happens, but don't... Don't be afraid if you get pushed and you have to recover, because remember, every opponent that fails to push you is also having to recover. So since Deathwraith really didn't have much to recover from, he has been put in the advantage of being able to push out and get map control, and to just stop them from expanding and building back into the game. So Malkor does drop another base here. Uh, he is going to start getting, uh, he's using his Orbo command to drop down those mules. But he's not really going to be able to do much because he is still the only one really defending this base. He's just got all these Marauders, 
here to defend and his, his, red, his red friend I mean he's got some banshees but I don't know he's, he doesn't have cloaking down yet he is getting it out and I've got the second base and I'm getting my voids here now so my void is here and this is what happens he's gonna try and push out and destroy death rays but then here's the void and you have no marines to defend this this void is just gonna go to town so I'm like alright void I get my second one here and we're just gonna start working on these racks I want to get these racks out of the way because I don't want him having any production at all. Even though these Marauders are a little bit more of a priority, one would think. I always like to hit Terran production because of all the races, Terran have the hardest time reproducing with all the rally points and they have slow production, especially on anything with Tech Labs. So that's why I chose to hit it first. And I, you know, it, it, it's really going to still work out for me because I'm going to get these voids fully charged off these supply depots. And I'm just going to eat through these Marauders. Now he is getting Marines out to try and push. And we do have the Banshees coming to our base, but it's really not that big of a problem. Because remember, I am still building voids here at this base. So even if he does push, he's got no way of hitting because Banshees can only hit area units. So they were really way too committed to no units with anti-air. And because they don't have anything that can hit my aerial voids, we're just going to go to town. I mean, he's, he's going to be like, oh, Stim, hit these zealots. But it doesn't matter because I've got fully charged voids right here that are just going to deal with them with ease. Now, he does run into the cannon fire, but, I mean, that many Banshees are going to have a heyday against that cannon. There's not much he can do. My cannon can do. And he's going to start hitting my line, and I was having some difficulty rallying my void over here because I'm doing too much at once. I should have moved my probes out faster, but that's okay. It really doesn't matter because I still have a base. They don't have anything. We're destroying everything at their base, and these Banshees are just going to die to those two voids with ease. And that's going to be the good game, and that is how you deny a super cheese from Terran. Do not get too overwhelmed when you're getting cheese, especially when you're coming from both players. Because that early cheese, like if you stop it fast enough and you get that scout out and you see what's going on and you adapt to it, you will easily be able to fend yourself off. Especially in 2v2, there's a lot of cheese going on. Uh, me and Deathwraith had a real big problem with cheese yesterday. So, I mean, just, just keep practicing. You'll get used to fighting those cheeses and make sure you adapt to their builds. The reason I want air... It's, I mean, usually I don't really like to go air against Terran, but the reason I went air against Terran in this game was because they only had Marauders and they didn't have anything to fight air. So it was it was just really, really, really lucky uh, first initial you know call, and my call ended up working out and helping us win the game. And especially since uh, we had one person who didn't get locked down in, into a build, and that's another thing you need to remember too. If you're getting double cheesed at the front or at the start, don't have both of you commit to defenses. Have one of you try to commit to defensive because you're going to get a little bit more behind than the other player and have the second player still concentrate on troops. It's always great to have defenses up, but if you share a base like this, you're easily going to be able, especially on this map, I mean, look how close you are. You'll easily be able to just cover your friend as well. I mean, I got a cannon over here, even though I never really needed it. So yeah, just remember to, to stay calm. Don't, don't get a little too hot-headed. And remember, sometimes you can get away with some crazy shit, especially when they fail. I mean, look, my nat my, I took their natural, and that's my secondary base. But anyway, that's it for now. I understand I did say that I was going to try to get some more races in here of gameplay. Uh, unfortunately, I'm just not really up to snuff on Zerg, so I, I will not be able to bring you uh, much besides Protoss. But there are a couple other players besides Deathrate that I am planning on playing with in the near future. So I hope that I can get some more races out. I know one of my friends who just started playing the game, he's going to be way scrubbier than I am or Death Wraith is, but that's okay because he'll learn. I think he might be playing Terran. Uh, we also have another friend that's Death Wraith's friend uh, that's going to be playing Terran. So we've got two Terrans that are going to be kind of being thrown into our video fold. We're we'll trying to get some 3v3s and 4v4s with those two players out soon. And also I have two other players and friends. Uh, one's a Platinum Leaguer who has expressed interest in getting on these videos. Another one is a gold leaguer who wants to get in so we are going to be getting you some more besides me and death Wraith coming out here soon but that's it for now thanks for watching this episode of scrubcraft and i'll see you nerds next time